I drove, I mean, the same uh, same amount of time in the car, I guess I didn't spend as everyone up here, but um, it was really cool to get uh, into rhythm again and uh, to work uh, with the car, with the setup and uh, with the team. Um, so at the moment everything is fine, you know, we're, uh, we uh, we're, um, stick to our plan and uh, that's the most important. And Tony, obviously a busy off season for Chip Ganassi Racing with that manufacturer switch. What are your impressions so far from the first session? Uh, you know, it was a big change for us. We, we worked really hard to uh, try to understand off track how the air kit worked. And uh, I think we had a pretty good idea. So first session, we're still our first time in the oval. I did test in St. Louis last year, but it was more for a for IndyCar, we test a couple of things that I, I think we guys all knew in trying to, to make it better when we get back there. But, um, yeah, you know, no uh, no big issues. So we're still learning, learning, sc scanning through all the list the engineers have to uh, to make it right when we come back. So we're not really concerned what what we're going to do here today. I mean, uh, we, uh, we're here to learn as much as we can. So uh, when we come back, we can try to uh, to win this thing. Thank you. James, I hear you had a busy off season. Probably nice. did a, a few things you nope. thought you would never do in your life, but back to your day job now, back in a race car. How great does that feel? Yeah, I mean, it's it's just it's great. This is kind of the unofficial start of the season really for us, you know, to get everybody out here, uh, all the new car and driver combinations and uh, this the whole field's on the track at the same time. You know, you get that kind of competitive spirit going again and uh, and that you know, excitement just for the start of the season. Questions for the drivers? Yes, David. I don't mean to be indelicate, but uh, why were the Schmidt-Peterson cars down at the bottom at 179 miles an hour? Sorry, there's no kind way of saying it. So. There's no way not to be indelicate. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, it's uh, about as delicate as a sledgehammer there, David. Uh, no, you know, we... Uh, we like everybody have a have a test plan, um, and and we're trying to trying to very hard to stick to that. You know, it, it's easy to get lost in the in the timesheets and try and tune for you know four o'clock in the afternoon on February tenth, which isn't when we go racing. So um, <clears throat> we're just we're getting through some basic stuff now. We're trying to stay focused on our program. We have two days, uh, so we're not we're not in any kind of rush. And uh, kind of like Tony said, we're just kind of focused on our program at the moment. I mean, I certainly hope that by the end of the two days, we're not still down there. But for right now, we're not uh, we're not too concerned. And uh, I don't really think that the results up here are really important. Right. Really important uh, will be when we're going to come back here for uh, the racing weekend. That's when you need to be at the top. Joey. Mikhail, can you talk a little bit about just where the holdup was to the late bring back of the car? Well, there was uh, different uh, circumstances, <laughs> let's say. Um, but uh, in the end, it all worked well, and I'm here. And, and how <laughs> important is it for you to be back for a second consecutive season and not have that year off? Uh, obviously, it is very important, and I hope it's going to be good for results because um, uh, last year was a good progress, I think, uh, from my side and from the team side during all the season. It was uh, the start of the season was difficult, but then uh, the progress was pretty good, and I think that was because, uh, like mostly, uh, I think it was me as well uh, because I lo I didn't do this, uh, the previous season, so now. I'm uh, I'm doing two second uh, second consecutive uh, season up here, and definitely it's gonna help. Um, so that's a great thing. Other questions? Yes, John. John Harville and PiperSpeed.com for Tony. Um, historically, you've been very successful here at Phoenix Raceway. Uh, last year, I believe you finished fourth. Um, what is it about this track that makes you so good here? Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, historically I'm pretty decent in the mile ovals. You know, it's uh, something that I worked really hard. Back on the Indy Lights days, I remember that uh, 
when I used to come to this kind of places, Steve Horn used to let me drive all day long, just like trying to teach me stuff. And, and I think that paid off big time. If you think about it, uh, if you look at my results, uh, in 98 and 99, I started at dead last every single mile over I did. And I got told that that was probably not supposed to be my thing. So I guess that got into a, under my skin and, and, and I worked really hard to, to improve that. So whatever it is suits my drive style. Um, obviously, I'm, I've been in good teams as well that provide me good cars. So uh, it's always good to come back to a place that you know you do well, you know you did well, you know you know you won a couple of races here, so it's always a, a good feeling, but I, I really don't, I don't know, I don't have the, the right answer for you. It's just something that, it's definitely up to my alley and I, I love the mile ovals, so that helps. Bruce. This is for Tony and uh, James. How strange is it that Kevin Kalkoban and Jimmy Vassar are not in the paddock? Yeah, I mean, I mean, put it this way: it's 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 weird or sad to see a team go, regardless what those people are. You know, I think, uh, but for me, especially that team that we we won the biggest race of our lives together, and then that's a team that we struggled together. And I remember how you know we struggled to get what we got, and and honestly, we only made it this far because of that win. So I was with Jimmy last week in Vegas, and, and it's sad. Um, I, I really hope that uh, I was even trying to convince Jimmy to go do, come do something for us, just for him to be around. Um, Kevin, obviously, it was a big part of this thing coming back together, him and Tony, when they talked. So it, it's sad. Uh, unfortunately, it's racing. I think it's everybody's reality. I mean, it, it's just the way it is. People come and go, but that was one team that I, from the bottom of my heart, I didn't want to see it go. Yeah, I mean, not not a whole lot I can add to that. You know, as as uh, as Tony said, it's sort of a function of our sport, and these things are kind of kind of cyclical. Some you know some great teams have come and gone over the years, and and unfortunately, KV and its various different acronyms that it existed in over the years, uh, you know, is, is not around anymore. Doesn't mean it won't ever be again. You know, Jimmy's uh, Jimmy's a racer at heart. It wouldn't surprise me if we see him back in some capacity sooner rather than later. And, and hopefully we do, because he's, you know, big personality and a big part of the sport. Any other questions for these drivers? Yes, John. For James, um, outside of the racing world, uh, doing Dancing with the Stars, have people come up to you and been able to recognize you for being on the show instead of being a race car driver? Yeah, I'm everybody's grandmother's favorite. That's that's the new thing. I oh, my grandma loved you on the show. So that's uh, bringing a whole new demographic of fan to IndyCar, which uh, which was a huge you know a huge motivator for doing it in the first place. So uh, you know when you when you're on a program that you know, uh, draws 10 to 11 million people a week, you know, that's, that's pretty big, pretty big numbers. And so you're bound to get uh, recognized a little more. And uh, like I said, a big, a big part of wanting to do it was to kind of help the visibility of the sport. And, and I think that we did that. And hopefully we see, uh, see some dancing fans in the grandstands this year. Any final questions? Yes, David. Uh, Tony, as far as the uh, uh, Honda package is concerned, uh, around here, do you actually feel a handling difference, or is it just uh, experimenting with uh, drag levels and downforce levels? It's it's early to say. Like, we did only like, you know, out of the three hours, you probably ran max 45 minutes total. But I would say there are a lot of characteristics that are different between the two, uh, engine-wise. Um, I really can't get into much details, but at this point, let me put it this way. Uh, Honda has a lot of positive things about their package and then a lot of negative things that we got to work on. So we're going to concentrate on the negative ones and use the experience that we got with the other manufacturer and, and try to play into what we got. Um, we know it's very well known that this track doesn't favor the Honda package. Uh, we IndyCar made a, a, a change last year a week prior to this race that actually, you know, it's, it's the way it is. You make a change, it's going to hurt somebody and, and ended up on our end. But 
it's their decision. We respect that. We're going to work on to make it better. So uh, we, we we know we're we know we're struggling, uh, especially here. But I know a place that actually the car is really good, and I'm not really concerned about that. Right? <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much. <laughs> He's talking about Indianapolis, in case you didn't know. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Oh. Oh.